And Tim? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You just stepped into the world. The man is mine is money. The ultimate podcast where we dive deep into the untamed territory. That's right. This is mentality. We're unlocking the vault of powerful discussions, real stories, and epic strategies for conquering life's challenges one shift at a time. Whether you're a go-getter chasing that bag, a servant leader seeking enlightenment, or striving to become the unbreakable force in your own life, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, so you know every time we drop exclusive content for people just like you. Without further ado, I got the brothers with me this morning. King Martin, how you doing? Man, I'm here, alive and well, and we fixed our crown and we're ruling the day. <laughs> All right, King Collins, what's the word? Hey, King Mega, I'm here, man. I came here to be great and influence men to do more, right? That's what we're about. We're talking about influence today. How to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, cult classic. And we're talking about this because we feel like men should strive for leadership and leadership is about influence, right? That's what we all want. We want influence. Right? You don't believe me? Would you take a million dollars and sit on a private island by yourself? <laughs> no. 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 Here's, here's the million dollars, but you got to live by yourself. You can buy all the cars, but you can't share it with nobody. You can buy all, you can buy, you can buy a yacht, but you got to be on it alone. No, you want influence. And that's what we're talking about today. So today we are on part two of six ways to make people like you. So to recap, Part one of six ways to make people like you. We talked about becoming genuinely interested in people. We talked about smiling. How to smile? At? Smiling is disarms people, man. It makes people feel more welcome to have you. And we talked about remembering a person's name. It's mm -hmm. the sweetest and most important sound in any other language. You know what I'm saying? No, nothing sounds better than your name. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't believe me, how do you feel about people that get your name wrong? Right? Well, somebody mispronounce mm -hmm. your name all the time, you'd be like, man, this dude, if this dude called me Tommy one more time, right, <laughs> it's going to have problems. So as we get to the next three steps or next three ways to get people like you, uh, principle number four is being a good listener and encouraging other people to talk. Principle number five is talking terms of the other person's interests. And principle number six is make the other person feel important, sincerely. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, mm -hmm. sincerely important. So, Mark, would you would you like to start? Let me, let me, what, did, what did you get out of principle number four about being a good listener and encouraging people to talk? Man, I mean, you guys have been hearing me say it time and time again, but, you know, be still long enough to listen. Be still long enough to listen. Be quiet long enough to learn and work hard enough to become. When you talk about the importance of building relationships with people, master the art of asking the question. Master the art of asking the question. It's, it's, it's plain and simple right here. Good leaders ask good questions. John, John Maxwell, my mentor. And I said it earlier, but when I walk into a room, I can tell after a short span of time who actually possesses true confidence. They always do the least amount of speaking. And they always have an inquisitive nature. They always ask the most questions. Right? We, we talked about the presidential election not too long ago. I think, that is, I think that it's fair to assess that the president of the United States should be for neither party. They should be independent and they should be, they should be considering thoughts of both sides. But a great decision maker is never one-sided. Why? Because of the duality of men. Yeah, there's always another component to consider. And when you step inside of the frame, the mindset of a human being, you have to consider about 90% of what they're going to say is going to be self-projection. It's going to be their thoughts being projected onto you. And then the next thing I would say is come to serve. You know, if you if you come with a heart of a servant, you got to think about that. Like, what does it take for me to serve Tim? What does it take for me to serve CJ? I have to, I have to ask you questions. 
I have to ask you a question. Hey, how would you like your eggs? Scrambled? Easy over? Just egg white? Salt, pepper? I have to stop and ask questions. And that requires me to listen. There's nothing about being able to serve humans, which is the call of leadership, right? But there's nothing about being able to serve people that requires me to be the one doing the speaking. Very, very little about serving requires me being the one doing the speaking, but it has everything to do with my ability to listen and retain. And what we see here over these next six chapters is the, is the, the calamity of humans, <laughs> the ability to retain. <laughs> you forget my name. <laughs> right now, you, I mean, it's hard to go somewhere and get good customer service. It is extremely difficult to go into an establishment and they show good cut and cu service is my love language. So forgive me. <laughs> right. But it's hard to step inside of a place and get good customer people who are giving personal attention. Right. Let people not be numbers. And lastly, I said here, I said, focus is blind and mute. Focus is blind and mute. Your sole focus should be to maximize your potential and master success. And then turn around and help others do the same. Repeat that. Your sole focus should be to, ma my sole focus, not you. My sole focus should be to maximize my potential and master success. And then turn around and do it for other people. But none of that, none of that requires excessive talk. Right? Instead, be willing to be still long enough to listen. Be quiet long enough to learn and work hard enough to become. Yeah, I, I really, really like that because, you know, especially when you're talking to business leaders, when you're talking about sales, right, a sales conversation and people have been misguided, lied to. I mean, there's tons of sales training. People are misguided and lied to to think that sales, I'm trying to, I'm showing you my charisma and my enthusiasm and I'm hyping you up and I'm just doing a bunch of talking. But that's not sales. Good. Right. That might be persuasion. Right. I see it. I watch my guy. He sells the pink stuff to do that tells jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. Right. Well, he sells is about conversation and jokes and laugh. It's it's a conversation. But in the the selling part is when he asks the question, how, if you had this, how would you use this? Would you use this to do this? Would you use this to do that? Right. The, the question is that he asks. That's the sales part where you're selling. You're trying to get information to find out whether or not I even have something that's for you. Not, I'm just trying to sell everybody what I have. Like, have I asked enough questions to analyze? Do I have what you want? Right? They do the, like, sell me a pen. Well, what do you need to write? What are you writing? Have you ever handwritten a letter? Have you ever handwritten a letter to your wife? What do you think your wife would, would feel about getting a handwritten letter from you? If you're going to handwrite a letter, you want to make sure you handwrite it with, with a pen that conveys the smoothness of the words that you're trying to say. Like, that's how you sell a pen, right? That that's, boy good. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> but like, like, like you, you ask the why, you get the information behind it, you know? And so that's what we miss. And and this was something that um, I had to learn, not as difficult, but I do it, but it's hard to explain how, that I do it. And it's because of the simple fact that, um, at first, when you're in a room and you feel the need to, to, to talk the most, like you feel inferior. You feel insecure when you're in these rooms. and you have Because you're trying to talk. And this, I would do this. I would talk to justify me being in the room. All like, right. I must be here. They need to hear how smart I am. They need to hear that. No, they need to hear this about me. They need to know that I belong in this room because I don't feel like I belong in this room. Mm -hmm. Right? Essentially. Right? Opposed to Right, walking out of a room or walking into that room, and just being genuinely curious, because that's what this—that's what this is about. Being genu genuinely curious in the other person. I'm curious enough to ask you your name and pronounce it right. I'm curious enough to ask you where your name comes from. Are you a junior? Right? Where, where does this come from? I'm curious enough to ask. So, so t you have children? Tell me about your children. I'm curious. I'm curious enough. Tell me about your career. Tell me about right. These are the things that really work. And as we're seeing this shift in the job market, this is how you can apply it. When you go on interviews, ask questions about the company. Ask questions, how did you get to this job? How long have you been here? 
why did you decide to stay, right? That's the thing that people like. People love themselves. Even us, we love talking about ourselves. Mm. Right? You want to give me talking? Ask me about my daughter. Right? You know what I'm saying? We love talking about ourselves, right? So, so this is what, you know, if you want to be classified as a good listener, if you want to be classified as a good conversationalist, just listen. Right? Be curious enough to ask people questions about the things that they're ultimately interested in. Tim, what do you got? Man, the royal road to a person's heart is to talk about the things he or she treasures the most. And, and for me, it's simple. Like, I'm going to research you. Yes, if you have a meeting with me, I'm going to find out who you are, what you like, what are your dislikes. You know what I mean? Because I need to know the character of the person that I'm conversing with, right? I mean, we we see it in we see it in football. You know, you study the opposition, you study their play calls, you study the play motions, and everything like that. We see it. We see it in the court systems. We see it in all of these different facets of life. Whoever it is you're going to be sitting across from the table from, you need to know who that person is. You need to know what moves them, what motivates them, what what ticks them off. You know what I mean? So that way you can avoid certain conversations and then you can highlight certain conversations. Researching someone's social media profile can gain you valuable insight into their interests, hobbies, and personality. Most people use social media as a journal nowadays. Most people will tell you exactly what they like, what exactly what they don't like. Even if they don't put it verbatim, if all they do is ever is repost stuff, you can create a narrative off of whatever it is that they're reposting. If every Tuesday you go to somebody's page and you see they posted something about Elon Musk, there is something about Elon Musk that they like. So guess what? Bring up Elon Musk. Talk about him. You know what I mean? Ask him about whatever's going on. Ask him about X. Ask him about Tesla. Ask him about whatever it is that Elon has going on because there is something there for you to gain the unfair advantage. And once people get into the room and they see you're a good listener, the craziest thing happens. Once they realize that you're being attentive to them, the wildest thing happens to me. They always want you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Once they see, oh, snap, you you like what I like. Well, what do you think about da 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 da, -da? That's when you pounce on them like a Honda and you go in there, you go for the kill, and you handle your own business. No, I'm teasing, man. <laughs> I'm going for the kill. I'm going for the kill. <laughs> but people, people want to feel, people want to feel important. You know what I yes. mean? Even, even little kids, if you if you're having a conversation with your child, it's going to get to a point where as they get older, your child's going to say, "You're not listening to me." If you're not listening to them, you know what I mean? People want to feel like they're being heard on things that they're passionate about. Good. Yeah, um, and that's a good segue because we get into principle five. Talk in terms of the other person's interests. Well, how do I find out what you're interested in, right? So, for example, uh, Tim was wearing a 49ers hat. Well, if I was to approach Tim to talk about, man, I grew up watching the 49ers, man. Steve Young was my favorite quarterback because I'm also a left-handed. I'm also a lefty. Man, I, you know, I, he, he made me believe that it, it, it was the first left-hand quarterback I seen. And he won a Super Bowl when I was a kid, right? Well, now we have something in common that we can talk about and we just open the floor for conversations, right? And so if I had never met Tim in, in, in my life, him wearing that hat gave me something that I know he's interested in for conversation basis. And that was just curiosity. Man, how'd you become a 49ers fan? Right? And, and the thing about this, what I really love about this book is this stuff only works if you're genuine. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. It, it, it's not, if you try to use this to manipulate people, it won't work. It won't come off as authentic. You have to authentically be curious about people. That's good. That's, right? And, that's and good. if you are not generally authentically curious about people, then you have to ask yourself, why don't you care about nobody else? Right? <laughs> I don't like people. I just don't like people, okay? <laughs> that's all. Why don't you care about people, right? You know what I'm saying? And we talk about like, well, like, I don't need people to like me. Yes, you do. <laughs> you, you do need people to like you and why would you want people to not like you 
Mm. Why would you want people to not like? Like, what, <laughs> what, what, what's the angle? What's the what's yeah, the angle? Because well, there's no new friend. There's no new friend. That's they why they want to get canceled. They want to get canceled. They, 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 you all got chose violence, and you want to get canceled. You know I, don't, I, mean? I don't care if you like me. Well, listen, I do. I care. I care if you like me. Now, I'm not seeking your approval, but I don't just yeah. want you to not like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's why? good. That's good. You liking me gives me access. I get favor with you. Yeah. Right, I have good rapport with you. I want to positively influence everybody I meet. I want to positively influence people. Well, I can't positively influence people if I'm not trying to be liked, or if I'm out here just being disliked. Like if if you know what I'm saying, like if I see him in a forty dollars, I walk up to him like, well, they gonna lose and walk away. I'm like what? What did you gain from that? You know what I'm saying like. <laughs> I, hey, listen, you know like, those Chiefs fans are rambunctious <laughs> like that, bro. Don't blame me. No, it, 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 and this is this is a balance because somebody's listening in on this and they're like, oh, well, what about the haters? What about them? Right. That's my whole point. <laughs> just, just because someone dislikes you doesn't give you the power yeah. to dislike them. No, see, like, we have to understand success. Success breeds hatred. It's really not even hatred. It's really envy. Yeah. And envy is just admiration yeah. conscrewed. Yeah. That's it. And they don't know how to express it. That's all that it is. So when you can see a hater as a person who really admires you, now you have sympathy. Or maybe even empathy, right? Depending on your journey, your road. You might have been the hater, right? <laughs> I, I remember when I was hating just like you. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Man, you remind like... me of my hating stuff. <laughs> right. right. They used to call me Jose. Jose, what do you mean? Jealous one <laughs> still envy. Jealous one still envy. <laughs> Man, my name was Jose. <laughs> right. Why that? Well, I feel like you got something unfairly. I don't feel like you worked this hard. Whatever it is, right? But just yeah. express genuine cu curiosity. Yeah. Hey, man, how did you get? It gives you access. It gives you access. What does access give you? Access gives you favor. The unfair access advantage. Access gives you favor. That's your unfair advantage. Yeah. Access. Why, why, why do I need this? Because uh, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. While God doesn't need you, God can do nothing on earth without you. Moment. He can't can listen, listen to the same people. That's crazy. And in order for him to leverage, in order for him to use you, you have to be agreeable. You have to be relevant. Yeah. You have to be. And that's why the whole call is to show love. Yeah. That's the whole call. That's the beginning and the end of it all. Showing love. Love is my cologne. Yeah. You smell it. You smell huh? it. <laughs> Come on, man. Love would smile, right? <laughs> love would know your name, right? Yeah. You love to be loved. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's it, though, right? There's only so much negative, negative seeds you can sow before you start getting what you sow, right? Okay. Every seed has a harvest. Well, you out here sowing strychnine, you know what I'm saying? You sowing poison ivy. Right? You don't, you know, with, with those negative things you're sowing. So, so listen, there's nothing wrong with standing on your values and your beliefs and not compromising. But there is something wrong with being intentionally disliked. Mm -hmm. There is something wrong with being intentionally argumentative. Right? There is something wrong with you intentionally not wanting to be liked. Right? I can be agreeable and still stand on my principles and beliefs. Because even with someone I disagree with, there is always a place of, of, of overlay. We humans, right? We have something in common, right? We made, we human. Hey man, what do you think about this? If I don't agree with what you think about this, hey, why do you think about that? Right? So I can talk to, you, I know they're trying to divide us, right? There, there's, there's a ploy to divide us as people so we don't come together. But in them trying to divide us, I always look for places that I have commonalities and I look for ways that I can talk in the pers other person's interest, even if you're interested in something that I don't like, because you would do it with your children. 
Mm-hmm. Right? You would talk to your children about dinosaurs for an hour if you don't, even if you don't like dinosaurs. You would talk about the stars, right? You you would talk about things that you don't like with your children. When when you're dating, oh, when you when you courting somebody and you're in a woman phase, oh, you you talk for hours about something you're not interested. You you you'll no find <laughs> you'll find something, right? Look, you I laugh at all the corny jokes, right? <laughs> right when I when I was courting my wife and she was a marine biologist and she had was she was in depth of working on manatees. I had never known. I didn't know what a manatee was. I'd never seen a manatee in my life. When she told me that, the next conversation, I see that manatees are like are like uh, uh, cows of the sea. <laughs> I see that manatees are, you know, why? Because hey, shout out to Manatee County. Yeah, He's obviously never been in I, South Florida. I've never <laughs> been. I never. I had never seen a manatee in my life. But when I found out that that was something she was interested in. I went and got information so I could also be interested in it. And that's what you would do, but you don't think that everybody deserves that level of respect. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's one of those things that um, you know, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were on the line with the brothers and and uh Mark said something. He said, Man, you know, Tim has mastered the art of small talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he's mastered the art of small talk. You know, and the reason I, I, I believe that I became this way was because small talk is what cultivates relationships. Small talk about something other people are interested in can lead to a relationship because it shows that you're interested in that other person and their interests. You know what I mean? There are a lot of people, a lot of times if you get on the phone with me, I will throw you off because the first one of the first things I'll ask you is, how'd you sleep last night? You know what I mean? Because the natural assumption is that especially if I'm talking to you first thing in the morning, at some point in time last night, you went to sleep. You know what I mean? And that's a conversation. Start, man, I didn't sleep good. Well, what happened? Why didn't you sleep good? Well, it's the anniversary of my mother's passing. You know what I mean? Well, you know, my baby's been up all night or my wife is going through this or, you know what I mean? Or I got this health issue and it's been on my brain. You get what I mean? And, and a lot of times, for me, because I am a person that's very, very spiritually bound, it opens the door for prayer, which allows me to serve you. You get what I mean? And so now not only did I listen to you, not only did I find your interest, but now I'm serving you by way of the spiritual realm. So guess what happens then? Whatever it is that I have to say, you're going to be obligated to yourself to at least hear what it is that I'm saying simply because I was here to serve you on three different facets by asking you one question. That's good. And I would sum this up as, um, I guess in closing, right, to th- these six ways to get people like you, these are things that you would do if you met your idol. Right, if you met whoever you, it is that you look up for, look up to, if you met them, you do this, mm-hmm. right? If, if you went to a concert, if you went to a Beyonce con- concert, you would smile. <laughs> you be genuinely, if you had a conversation with, with, with Taylor Swift one on one, you smile. You'd be genuinely interested in her. You'd ask her questions about herself. And right? see, these I, are the things I, that you would do. This this book should be called How to Be a Human on Earth, right? <laughs> well, for me, it's like the when I think of these concepts, I think of um how not to ruin your relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like you could do these things and fix your marriage right now. If yeah. you apply these things, most, most brothers don't listen. Most sisters don't listen to their spouse. You know what I mean? If you're at the point where you're arguing and bickering way up here now, you know what I mean? We're not listening to each other. We're not, we're not, who's the voice of reason. You get what I'm saying? You wouldn't mess your spouse name up. Go ahead and, you know, have relations with your wife and, mess her name up let me come back next week and let me know how that turned out for you you know what i mean like walk in the house and not smile at your wife hey baby how you doing how was your day see if she don't give you the attitude and guess what she's a cultivator that means whatever you give her she gonna multiply so if you give her attitude she gonna multiply the attitude and give it right back to you you know what i mean so i i say like if you're looking for a relationship this is a great book to read this is gonna make you a better person internally. And if you're and if you want to enhance your relationship with the woman or the man of your choice right now, 
I say read the book as well because it's going to enhance your relationship. I don't think you can go wrong with this, man. Make the other important feel important and do it and then do it sincerely. Like that's yeah. Mark, uh, Mark, Mark, you can give him the uh, the Waldo Emerson yeah. quote. You can close out that water. That's it. I like I like what Waldo said. Waldo Emerson, right? He said, Every man I meet is superior to me in some type of way. And in that I learn from him. In that I learn from him. And so what does that mean? Keeping it simple. Here it is, King. Power thought. Fight to be interested. Not interesting. Fight to be interested. Not interesting. You do that, you cover pretty much chapters four, three, six. <laughs> and just you like got that. It. Yeah, hey, got it. It's a wrap, baby. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. We hope you've been inspired, motivated, and above all, empowered to embrace your true potential. Remember that it's not about what you heard here, but what about what what you do with what you heard here, um, with, ah, with what you do with what you've heard here. As we part ways for now, know that we're cheering you on from the sidelines. You've got what it takes, and the world is your playground. The Mentality Tribe is growing every day, and we want you to join us because we breed kings. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Academy of Kings. Comment and check out the other incredible episodes for more laughs, insight, and mind-blowing content. You won't want to miss it. You can all always join us live for our mastermind exclusively right here before we go live, before we go live with this podcast by typing We Breathe Kings in the comments, and we'll get you connected. So until next time, for King Neesman, King Akintati, I am King Timothy Hunter. Keep chasing those dreams, conquering those challenges, and mastering your mentality. Stay curious, stay hungry, stay legendary, and stay tuned in because we breed kings. Cut!